Senator Wong, good evening. Good evening, Madam President. Good to speak with you. And I am thrilled to be speaking about this bill. Uh, I think first and foremost, it is a bill that will save lives. And I think the good chairwoman of the Transportation Committee articulated it was a collaborative effort because there was no partisanship. It was about safety. And unfortunately, we were all touched by tragic loss of a colleague that we knew. And as a result, this proposal that we see today is a culmination of so many of our colleagues who propose bills related to wrongly driving. And it created a coalition, and we had a fantastic opportunity to address this issue with tremendous feedback from many people. Uh, this bill had tremendous support in the House, and upon passage, I hope, in the Senate, it will be concurrent, and I hope it will be signed into law. But I think the reason for such a sense of urgency is the good Madam Chairwoman had articulated the dramatic rise in regards to fatalities of wrong-way driving. Uh, and our very, very, very accomplished Commissioner of Transportation, uh, Garrett Ucolito, has been a tremendous leader. Even before he became Commissioner, it had been a passion and advocacy because he understands we can make a positive difference in saving lives. But when he articulated the number that, that wrong-way driving deaths in Connecticut from the numbers that was offered by the chairwoman, but put into percentages, it's up nearly 500%. And when you think about more than 80% of it are due to impaired driving. Now, I venture to guess that there are potential avoided accidents that occurred in wrong way driving. The near misses that we don't hear about. I believe that number is even higher. And what is truly tragic when we talk about runway driving is the simple fact it is a preventable tragedy. Now, we're not trying to mandate and govern and tell people how to live. I think that's one of the biggest balancing acts that we have in our proposal on transportation and in, in the issues we're trying to address. And I think people have articulated well, we are doing our best to balance improving, educating, creating awareness, developing better practices. Because ultimately, regardless of what laws we make, you can't legislate common sense and respect for the road. So the examples that were brought up, First and foremost, the implementation of signage, the utilization of technology, sensors, the program of awareness and education. I hope that the, the, the people watching and listening will be on the lookout in TV and in advertisement and in and, and social media, the One Wrong Move program that addresses the awareness and, and, and the prevention considerations related to wrong way driving and impaired driving. I think the other part in regards to that was removed from this is considerations of rumble strips. But most important of all, we're talking about greater awareness. We're talking about saving lives. And part of it, I, I must extend to Governor Lamont as well. He has put money into this project. We were present as a collaborative bipartisan leadership at a wrong way uh, program. And, and in the bonding package, he has allocated in his budget $20 million to be able to facilitate this program. So we're trying on all ends here, legislatively, financially, culturally, but still, we still have a long ways to go. We can't drive impaired. We can't drive distracted. We can't run red lights. We have to respect 
not only for the safety of ourselves, but the safety of others on the road, whether it be motor vehicles, bikes, pedestrians. We have a social responsibility to avoid these kind of tragedies. And I hope as we hopefully pass this bill and as this gets greater visibility, I hope that we are able to, 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 to impact somewhat during the current high school prom seasons where parents are sending off their children in a rites of passage of such a special moment where they are going out celebrating the opportunity of another stage in their lives. But unfortunately, we all also have incidences of impaired driving. Let us hope through our discussions in this chamber today and hopefully the ultimate passage and maybe some visibility related to awareness, education, and prevention that we raise the awareness for all those beautiful high school seniors that are celebrating the rites of passage of their lives, that they will have the rest of their lives in front of them should they take a little note of caution, a little note of prevention, so they can get home safe to the loved ones that are always, always thinking of them. So, Madam President, again, I want to thank the good chairwoman of this committee, Transportation Committee, the tireless effort of the House Chair and the collaborative support that was offered by the House Ranking Member. And I'm going to follow up and finish by acknowledging the collaborative and the leadership of Commissioner Ucolito. He has truly been an individual that was willing to test the limits of what is convention and the status quo to bring up a discussion that may be a little bit too sensitive, a little bit too introspective for people that say, I'll be all right on the road. I applaud him for his incredible vision and his credible courage, and I thank him for his leadership on behalf of the transportation and the safety of the people on the roads of Connecticut. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator. Will you remark further?